Hi, my name is Alexia B. Martinez. I am a master's student in the Department of Communication Studies at California State University of San Bernardino. Today, I'll be presenting Spreading Self-Love Using Social Comparison Theory to Understand Body Positivity on Social Media. My literature review serves as a precursor to the work I'm preparing and developing to examine this year. I'm interested in studying the body positive movement, but first let me give you some context as to what led up to the movement. On the left is Victoria's Secret's 2014, The Perfect Body Campaign, which features this idealized thin body standard that circulates throughout media and society. Researchers have studied the negative effects it has on audiences for decades, and it has shown to be deeply problematic. But let's shift our attention to this counterpoint to the thin ideal, the body positive movement. On the right is an example of a body positive post. This is Jamie Karoma, who uses Instagram as a platform for social change. She contributes to the body positive movement by rewriting the narrative of what women look like using her own body as a point of reference. But what is body positivity? Body positivity is the assertion that people should share an appreciation and acceptance of their own body and others' bodies, regardless of what media and society thinks. As far as the thin ideal being studied in media, we should also be paying attention to the implications the body positive movement has on its audiences. I will present to you my theoretical framework, research, methodologies, an example of what this process may look like, and the overall key takeaways of today's presentation. This is an analysis I conducted to show the gaps existing in research between body positivity and social comparison theory. Social comparison theory was created by Leon Festinger in 1954. It is a process in which individuals evaluate themselves through the comparison to others. Social comparison theory is an underused, but can be a useful way to analyze and understand the body positive movement. Previous research has used social comparison theory to analyze women's perception on the thin ideal. It has shown reoccurring themes such as low body satisfaction rate, low self-esteem, and development of eating disorders all of which can be found in Bessenhoff's 2006 study and Myers et al. 2012 study. In 2017, Clayton et al. applied social comparison theory to analyze women's perception to average and plus size models. However, there has not been enough research that fully investigated the body positive movement. If social comparison theory is heavily cited in analyzing the thin ideal, there should be more research using social comparison theory for the body positive movement. Now that we have an understanding of social comparison theory, I'm gonna to talk to you about my research findings. Women's bodies are sexually objectified in mass media and society. Fredrickson and Roberts 1997 literature adds that in return, women join the sexual objectification gauge and begin to view themselves and others as a collection of body parts. Research demonstrates that media builds and shapes audiences perception regarding beauty and body norms as cited in Tigman's et al. 2020 study. With a large amount of images, advertisements, TV shows, movies, all circulating around the thin ideal, women are pushing towards it. However, as traditional media translates over to social media, people are pushing back. Social media gives users the power to create their own content, voice their own opinions, and challenge media and societal norms actions done through the body positive movement. In order for us to analyze the body positive movement and the effects it has on audiences, we should apply social comparison theory. Now that you have an understanding of my purpose and the analysis and where the gaps are in research, I want to talk to you about the methods I used to find that research. I performed my secondary research through the use of search engines such as Google Scholar, EBSCOhost, and OneSearch. 
During my research process, I wanted to expand outside of these research engines because of the limited amount of research on body positive material. I reached out to doctoral scholar Madeline Wick, who studies at Pepperdine University, majoring in psychology. I asked her for her input. She suggested that we should be looking at body positive material and the effects it has on audiences because there's very few studies that do so. Through my preliminary research, I constructed key words, body image, SCT, social comparison theory, body positivity, and social media. However, there's not enough research that applies social comparison theory to body positivity. So I want to give you an, an idea of what this process may look like. I have Jamie Caroma's Instagram post in which she displays and captions the importance of embracing oneself regardless of the small mold set in society. Within these comments are posts from followers who thank her for sharing her story with others asserting that they just really needed to see this with comments such as, love this, I look at this and love myself even more. Thanks for your positivity. There should be an emphasis of the process in which individuals engage in social comparison. Given social comparison theory, it will be interesting and insightful to learn how body positive content affects their followers. With users demonstrating a comparison of body positive content, I'm gonna to talk to you about the key takeaways from today's presentation. Women's bodies have been sexually objectified the result of that, that they push towards this thin ideal set by media and society. This has shown a negative and troubling social, psychological, and behavioral effects, as cited in Bessenhoff's 2006 study and Myers et al. 2012 study. However, social media gives users a social power to push back. They can create their own content, build their own ideals, all done through the body positive movement. In order for us to analyze the body positive movement, we should use social comparison theory as it has been an underused, but can be a useful way to analyze and understand it. In conclusion, I discussed with you the key elements of today's uh, presentation. Through this application of social comparison theory to body positivity, we can learn more of the effects it has on audiences. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I look forward to empirically studying this phenomenon. I love to answer any questions.